Hello, I'm Professor Paul Bingham, and this is Biochemistry One. Uh, our goal today is to take the first steps toward mastery of the context of metabolism. This is an introduction to metabolism. And you'll notice that I'm wearing the periodic table tie again today. And the reason for doing that is to emphasize again the underlying simplicity of this story, the simplicity of the chemistry of what is called the metabolism of organisms. Let me first put metabolism in the larger context in which we've been operating. And then I'll come back and forecast for you a little bit about where the chemical simplicity comes from. So this is again our simple diagram of a uh, biological organism consisting of biochemically encoded design information which has the capability to make biochemically make biochemical tools and the the purpose of those tools is to assist in the replication of that design information. That's the underlying logic of uh, organisms. This is the three generations of organisms shown on the image here. And over time, natural selection acting on genetic variation, random mutations occurring in design information, continues to refine the tools that organisms make. We've talked about uh, what some of those tools are, so remember that we call the combination of tools, which in the human case includes all of our bodies, and the design information, which includes our germline genetic design information. Collectively, we call that a vehicle. So the vehicles are the context in which all of biochemistry, and in particular all of metabolism, our concern here, is going to occur. So let's put metabolism in this context. So each of these tools uh, consists of uh, some kind of molecular machine. Uh, often it's a globular molecular machine of the sort that we've talked about extensively before now, including catalysts. And the catalysts are going to play a role in metabolism. But what catalysts are going to do here is that they're going to regulate the flow of matter and energy through an organism. Now you may not think of an organism as something that is a the, the focus of a flow, but I'll remind you in just a moment that we absolutely are and we essentially are. We are non-equilibrium thermodynamic systems through which matter and energy must continuously flow if we are to survive. But for now, let's zero in and make a really crucial point. This flow of matter and energy through the organism over time is collectively referred to as metabolism. And we're in this segment, we're going to put all of this in a kind of context, forecast for you the details of metabolism, and then in the next several segments, we're going to look at, uh, at particular central elements of metabolism in much more detail. Our purpose here in this segment is to get a sense of context, to get a sense of, uh, of trajectory, where we're headed, where this is going to lead us. So let's look at the thermodynamic context of metabolism. Remember that the first, uh, the, the uh, second law of thermodynamics, all of thermodynamics, controls the function of organisms just like it controls the function of non-biological uh, 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 events out in the real world, as we've talked about extensively before. So let's talk about animal metabolism again now, just the sort of context. So metabolism is what we do with complex, high energy reduced and reduced molecules. That is, they're chemically reduced. I'll remind you a little bit later about what that means, reduced uh, com uh, compounds. And in catabolism, which is a subset of metabolism, catabolism organisms burn these high energy uh, uh, reduced compounds down to simpler, more oxidized compounds, extracting energy as they do. And we'll see a little bit more about that now and a great deal more in the next several segments where we look at the details of the central flow of matter through metabolism. But there's another half to metabolism that is equally essential. It's called anabolism, and it refers to the use of some complex high energy molecules together with energy liberated and provided through catabolism to build other things, to build other complex high energy uh, 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 molecules, including the molecules, design information, and tools, and so on, that are essential to the survival of the organism. Plant metabolism does all of these things too, but it does one of the things that animal metabolism does not do. That is, it uses external energy to, to take simple low energy oxidized molecules and reduce them back to create high energy uh, reduced molecules. The source of that energy, do you know what it is? I'm sure you all do. Pause and think for a moment. It is in fact the sun. So in fact plants capture high energy photons from the sun, use that uh, electro, use that um, uh, the energy stored uh, present in the solar photons to create high energy chemical bonds which make up the 
body of the plant, and of course plants then turn around, animals rather, turn around and eat the plants, consuming that ultimately solar energy. So we won't be too focused on it here, although we'll turn attention to it later when we look at photosynthesis. But in fact, all of the energy that's coursing through our bodies over time, the, the, over our lives, is ultimately derived from the solar photons that bombard the Earth. Again, that's not our concern here, though. Our concern for the next several segments, and this segment is going to be animal metabolism. Organisms that are eating high energy compounds made by plants and then doing various things with them. All right. So let's use another analogy that's useful to anticipate uh, what we're going to see when we look at metabolism. Let's analogize it with the, the organism with an internal uh, as an internal combustion engine, the sort that you see here. And one of the things it's going to do is burn gasoline, the equivalent of gasoline. Uh, that is the equivalent of catabolism. But in fact, we have to make our, this analogy a little more strained in order to get the whole picture of animal metabolism. Not only do we burn energy for, I'm sorry, burn food, like a car burns gasoline, in order to be able to move around the landscape to act in adaptive ways, all the things that are crucial for uh, uh, the macroscopic for the organism to function, but also to fuel the underlying chemical metabolism that makes all that possible, which is what our focus is here. But in addition, organisms are a little different than an actual automobile. They are self-repairing internal combustion engines. They're not only burning fuel all the time, they're constantly putting in new replacement parts, throwing out old ones, replacing them with new ones. And they're actually going to use gasoline to build a replacement part. So it, ag again, here in our analogy, starts to get a little strained. But in fact, that's essentially the two pieces of metabolism. We're going to take in fuel, and we're going to use it to to drive the energy expenditures of our everyday lives, but we're also going to use that fuel to build replacement parts and the ongoing upkeep of the adult body that we occupy. All right, let's think about the magnitude of this problem. So that's us at the little silhouettes up at the upper center of this image. Um, in order to live an adult life, we are going to consume around 25,000 pounds of food and produce around 25,000 pounds of solid waste as we go through our entire adult life cycle. In other words, we really do have to take in gasoline all the time, and we're going to be using it and excreting the byproducts of degrading it in the same way that the uh, fumes uh, come out the exhaust pipe, for example, in an internal combustion engine uh, as we go about our uh, uh, upkeep and function of the biochemical bodies that we occupy. And, uh, and that is going to be our subject when we look at metabolism. What's going on as we flux all this matter through our body? How is, it, how is it moving through the body? How is that motion controlled? How is energy extracted when needed? How is it deployed and for what purposes is it deployed? All right. So let's look at the detailed thermodynamics of metabolism. As I alluded to a, a moment ago, uh, metabolism uh, thermodynamics rules all. That is, the, the rules of chemistry uh, dictate how the metabolism of organisms work, just like they dictate how an internal combustion engine works. Uh, nothing conceptually different. The mechanical details are different, conceptually, completely uh, analogous. So this is a, a, a first diagram of some of the a most important central actors in metabolism and catabolism. And let's look at what they are. So catabolism, again, as we said, uh, organisms, animals burn high energy food molecules uh, and burn them down to oxidize them down to simple molecules. And in the per process, they generate high energy storage molecules, two of which, not all of which, but two of which are shown here, uh, reduced NAD or reduced NAD phosphate, as it's shown here, details about that later, and ATP, uh, which we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about in this segment in a few minutes. And in other words, they're taking an exergonic reaction, which is burning, biochemically burning food, exergonic releasing energy, and they're going to capture it to drive an endergonic synthesis of high energy storage molecules like NAD and, and uh, reduced NAD and ATP. Let's now contrast that with anabolism. With anabolism, we're going to, the organism is going to take the high energy currency molecules that we just talked about that are produced by catabolism, <clears throat> so NAD, phosphate, and ATP, and they're going to burn those, they're going to use those to synthesize uh, large, new large complex molecules. In other words, they're going to take the exergonic reaction of burning the currency molecules, and they're going to drive endergonic reactions like synthesizing macromolecules. Of course, among this macromolecular synthesis includes the replication of DNA, des genetic design information, the building of biochemical tools, and most importantly from our point of view here, the ongoing flux of... <laughs>